So, um, with us, we are extremely, extremely honored. Um, he has been a voice um, for many causes. He has used his incredibly brilliant talent to speak to the major issues facing Puerto Rico, facing Latin America. He's become not only an incredible performer, a brilliant artist, but he's become a voice for the voiceless. And that is what art should speak to. At the end of the day, whatever we do in life, it should be about becoming the voice of those that don't have voice. I He does not need any introduction. Rene just made it here. We're so happy to have him here. He's been presente in the most important moments for Oscar's release. So, René, aquí, bienvenido a este lugar, reclamando la libertad de Oscar López Rivera. ¡Que viva Calle 13! Gracias, gracias, gracias. Este, bueno, voy a hablar en español. Porque me sale más fácil que en inglés. I'm going to speak in Spanish because it's my first language. Eh, este, nada, esto, yo formo parte de, de una lucha que llevan to, toda esta gente y todos nosotros. Este, y lo que hay que dejar claro aquí, que seamos miles, seamos cientos, seamos diez, los que estamos para luchar por la liberación de Oscar López, de, de Oscar López, estamos para luchar hasta el final y vamos a luchar hasta el final todo el tiempo, todo el tiempo porque esto es una injusticia y, y ojalá y no, 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 ojalá y salga ahora, si no vamos contra Trump a luchar también para que nos sorprenda y lo libere y, y yo sé que va a pasar. Yo sé qué va a pasar porque si no, nosotros nos vamos a encargar de dejarle saber al mundo que esta injusticia se cometió. Y eso va a quedar marcado en documentales, en libros de historia que vamos a hacer en español, en inglés, en todos los idiomas. Para que todo el mundo sepa que se está cometiendo esta injusticia, al igual que muchas injusticias más acá en este país. Este, yo voy a dar mi apoyo siempre, voy a estar aquí presente. Pero yo le doy las gracias a todos los que están aquí hoy, que se levantaron temprano, este, que, que están listos para estar en pie de lucha y manifestarse en contra de lo que está pasando y a favor de su liberación. Este, y le doy las gracias a todos los puertorriqueños que están hoy en Puerto Rico también manifestándose. 
este, toda, la, toda la gente de todos los países latinoamericanos este, que se han manifestado a favor de la liberación de, de, de Oscar López este, no es una lucha únicamente de puertorriqueños, es una lucha de todo el mundo porque se trata de derechos humanos, no hay, no hay colores ni partidos políticos aquí esto no es una lucha de independentistas nada más, esto es una lucha de todo, de estadistas, de, de Estado libristas eh, y, y de independentistas y de puertorriqueños y de latinoamericanos y de europeos, todo el mundo. Lo que hay que hacer es ver cómo la hacemos más grande, más grande en unidad, cada vez más grande y más grande y más grande. Yo sé que va a crecer más y va a crecer más y va a crecer más. Este, nuevamente, gracias y pues aquí yo estoy para lo que necesiten. Pedro Julio had the opportunity to also speak to him, but uh, I'm so glad that he is here. He is a friend. He's been fighting the good fight in Puerto Rico and abroad for uh, expanding rights for the LGBT community, and he'll say a few words. Yeah. Gracias, Melissa. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still emotional. It's the first time that I spoke with Oscar, and uh, I, you could feel his, his spirit. You could feel his energy, his freedom. You could feel it through the phone, and... Uh, él me dijo, Pedro Julio, es un placer conocerte por fin, aunque sea por teléfono. Eh, he seguido tu lucha, que es nuestra lucha. Eh, y cuando él se refiere a mi lucha, es a la lucha por la comunidad LGBT. Y, y me dijo, y, y esa lucha tiene que crecer. Tiene que crecer en los corazones y las mentes de las personas para que todos seamos libres. Eh, y escuchar a una persona que lleva 35 años preso, expresarse con tanta libertad, es algo que... A veces nosotros quedamos por sentado esa libertad que tenemos, ¿verdad?, entre comillas, pero que, tenemos, que estamos fuera, eh, ¿verdad?, eh, no la valoramos como él la valora. Eh, y es la lucha por la libertad que yo he llevado por ya 20 años y que mucha gente como Melisa, como Carmen Yulín, como Clarisa, como René, como José, como Oscar, como tanta gente se ha unido a esa lucha que es nuestra lucha. Y... Nosotros tenemos que decir presente en todas las causas justas. We need to be there for each other. We need to be there for Oscar, but then we have to be there for women. And then we have to be there for immigrants. We have to be there for Muslims. We need to be there for, for every other struggle. We need to be there. Y Oscar nos enseña eso. Eso es lo que nos enseña Oscar, que hay que decir presente en las causas justas que nos unen como seres humanos. So, yo... Eh, que solo quiero decir, y le, lo que le dijo Oscar fueron mis últimas palabras a él, la comunidad LGBT está contigo, Oscar. Como tú has estado con nosotros, porque él escribió una carta a favor de los derechos de la comunidad LGBT que fue publicada en El Nuevo Día y en otros periódicos. Así que él unió su voz a mi voz, a nuestra lucha, y cuando nos, como dice Carmen Yulín, cuando nos hacemos ecos de las voces de la gente, es que nosotros podemos aspirar a ser mejores. Eh, así que que nos inspire esa solidaridad que nos muestra Oscar a que seamos más solidarios todavía en la, en la era de Trump que ahora va a empezar, que seamos más solidarios, que seamos más presentes, que seamos más combativos, pero sobre todo que seamos más esperanzadores, más inspiradores y que amemos, amemos, amemos. Esa es la lección de Oscar. Wow. Today is the birthday of Eugenio Maria de Hostos, as Congressman Luis Gutierrez reminded us. I just want you to understand that in 1874, Hostos was li living in Lima, Peru. His biography is entitled Eugenio Maria de Hostos, Ciudadano de las Americas. And he lived in almost every country of Latin America. And while in Peru, he wrote some incredibly wonderful pieces for the newspapers in Lima, condemning, condemning the treatment of Chinese, of Chinese immigrants in Peru. Most people know him as the founder of the first university for women in the Dominican Republic and perhaps in Latin America. Most people will know him as one of the people that helped to design one of the railroads 
that connect Argentina and Chile. Eugenio Maria de Hostos, wherever he went, became a voice of those who did not have a voice. His last gesture was to come here to the White House and meet with the president, President McKinley, and brought a letter, a document, from La Liga de Patriotas Puerto Riqueño demanding the independence of Puerto Rico. <coughs> he died in 1903 in her homeland, in our homeland, the Dominican Republic. And he told his friends in the Dominican Republic that his body was to lie in the Dominican Republic until Puerto Rico would be free. So I want to thank our Dominican supporters as Piaget made a brilliant presentation today. There's something that unites us as a people from Patagonia all the way to the heart of this country. We Latinos are going to transform this continent. We are the overwhelming majority of people on this continent. In actual fact, there's a billion people on this continent. We constitute almost 700 million. So we're going to transform this continent. We're going to transform this country. We're going to transform it with the spirit that no person can be an alien in this country. Yes. And part of Oscar's work, which most of you may not know, and I was talking to Alderman Moreno and Alderman Maldonado as we were coming here, there's a part of history because Alderman Maldonado's father-in-law, Hector Franco, was one of Oscar's closest allies. That's why he could relate the story of Nancy and Oscar, Nancy, his wife, because that's how close our families were. And Hector Franco became a major community organizer. But in Chicago, we connected with the black movement. As a matter of fact, we held meetings with the Black Panthers. We were there when the leadership of the Black Panther was killed in 19, 1969. We were there when, and my brother was at Pine Ridge Reservation in 1973. Oscar was in every struggle of the Chicano movement from New Mexico, the land grant movement, to the movements in Denver, to the movements in Texas, everywhere, Oscar would say, presente in the Chicano movement. What people may not know is that some of the great leaders of the Chica Mexican movement in Chicago were actually formed with Oscar, and that includes Alderman Denis Solis, who actually was going to be here. Unfortunately, today in Illinois, you have the swearing in of the General Assembly, and he had to be there with his uh, one of the people he just backed, a Chinese who became the first member of the uh, state legislature in Illinois, and he could not be here. But Rudy Lozano, I mean, there's a history that people don't know about Oscar's commitment to many, many people's struggle. So for me, it's in that idea that, that, that we are one people on this continent, and that we must ultimately take over this continent, not to dominate it in the way that it has been dominated, but to work with every single component of this continent. And that includes millions of indigenous people whose voices we don't hear in Chiapas or in Peru or in Ecuador or in Colombia. And we have to become part of those voices. We have to be part of the voices of the African Latinos who are not recognized in many parts of Latin America. So 
There's a lot of work to be done. And I think Oscar, in many ways, has made that work easier because he understands it, he's lived it. So he has not only sacrificed his personal freedom for Puerto Rico, but also his personal freedom for the dignity of every human being. I want to obviously end this by giving Jose Rivera the last word. I want to make sure that Jose is brief, but let me tell you, this man, this man is legendary. People don't know the history of this man. This man battled for the rights. When in New York City, Puerto Ricans tried to create something similar to the publicos in Puerto Rico, they were called the gypsy um, drivers. Jose Rivera organized them and today thousands upon thousands of Dominicans and Haitians and all kinds of people from everywhere are what? They're taxi drivers in New York because he opened that door for them. There's an incredible story to be told about Jose. Jose has been a voice sometimes in the wilderness um, for justice and Jose really made the cause of Puerto Rican political prisoners legitimate in 1991 when he introduced the first resolution to at the City Council of New York, which by the way, Melissa also last year followed yeah. Yeah. asking for the release of the Puerto Rican political prisoners. Jose? Yeah, yeah. 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 Jose. Jose. Gene, permite me. But I've quite often been accused of speaking fluent broken English. <laughs> I've quite right. often been accused of speaking broken Spanish. And the reason for that is that I'm a proud New Yorker. Yay! So I'm going to speak in Spanish. <laughs> Jose mencionó la resolución del 91. Ustedes me conocen a mí en diferentes en diferente formas. La mayor parte de, de todos ustedes me conocen a mí con mi camarita en la mano. Yo le digo que una de las cosas que más me sorprendió a mí, que en el año que la alcaldesa de San Juan estaba siendo juramentada, Yo pasé por allí con mi camarita en la tarima. Yo nunca había hablado con ella. Y ella se dirige al pueblo y dice, aquí tenemos a alguien que yo tengo que mencionar quién es. Ari no, no, no la conocía. Es decir, aquí tenemos a un New Yorker que le gusta estar grabando todo y bla, bla, bla. Yo te doy, por fin te doy las gracias. Ya han pasado tantos años. Y esta joven. Ahora, very quickly, Mira, in 1981, I met this young lady. Ven para acá, joven. Yes. In 1981. Young lady. Young lady. Tú no lo parece, no lo parece, pero tú no eres tan vieja como yo. Okay. I met her in a struggle. Listen to this. And, uh, and uh, that year, there were over 3,000 Haitians who were, were sent to Puerto Rico out of Miami and put in concentration camp. We got involved. I got involved with her. I didn't know she was Dominican. All I know is that she was someone of conscience. Dispuesta a luchar. Y hemos estado luchando de aquel tiempo, pero ella fue una de las primeras mujeres que me daba cocotazo a mí. Y por eso es que yo ando una línea derecha. Oh, yes. 1991, yes. I can look around, I don't want to mention too many, too many names, pero yo veo a Yolanda, creo que se llama Rosado. Está por allá. Okay, está por allá. 1991. A group of people were trying to put a resolution, something together. I said, I can help you. Now, it was not easy, but we did. We put together uh, that resolution. And then, because I'm fluent in broken Spanish and broken English, I got a phone call from whom? For that young lady, lady right here. Look. Give me, give me, give me. Yeah. I got a phone call and I say, Jose, 
You try to put a letter together. Can I help you? <laughs> Now I knew I was wrong. My Spanish was not that good. <laughs> Ella dijo, yo te puedo ayudar. Yo dije, mira, yo sé que tú no quieres herir mis sentimientos. Yo sé que lo que yo es fatal, el lenguaje. So, ayúdame. Ella y yo, de aquel entonces, eh, comenzamos esta campaña para la libertad. Ahora, no podemos irnos de aquí. Yo sé que ustedes vienen de muchos lugares, muchos lugares. Pero yo quiero también traer aquí a Vini y a Mari. Yeah. Vini y a Mari. You have here a group of youngsters. Hey, Vini, Mari. Yeah. You have a group of youngsters. They're, by the most part, they are employed or unemployed construction workers. I met this youngster. Come here. Come here, Mari. Come here, Vini. Yeah. Yeah. I met this youngster, come here. I met this come here, Marty. when they were about 17 years old. And we developed we developed a slogan when they were rebuilding the Bronx on the Jimmy Carter, we developed a slogan. If we don't work, nobody works. If we don't work, nobody works. Who are we? Positive! Work for us. Yeah. Who's back yard? Our backyard. Who's back yard? Our backyard. Y el Bronx y la Universidad de Nueva York, que ha sido reconstruida hoy en día, es, se debe a los esfuerzos de estos jóvenes que todavía están luchando. Ahora, yo me siento orgulloso, quiero terminar aquí, me siento orgulloso de decir que no termina ahí, porque aquí tenemos esta familia, yo conozco a esta nena y la tengo a ella cuando era niña en video. Esta niña. Yo creo que la mamá es Ana López. Ana López. Yeah. Y mira este, que siempre me ha caído encima. Tiramos un concierto, Fené, con Dani Rivera para Oscar, recientemente. Y este se me trepa en la tarima encima. Tú tienes que anunciar esto. Y yo dije, ¿qué hago yo ahora? Pues se lo pasé a Esperanza Martel y ella anunció de la tarima. Ok, pues ese siempre me daba cocotazo. Pero yo no sé quién es este niño. O sea, que la lucha de nosotros se la están pasando a otras generaciones. Aquí la resolución que yo presenté fue con la ayuda de Mike Nieves que está por ahí, escondido. Eh, Mike Nieves está por ahí, escondido. Y el gesto es historia. Yo le doy las gracias a todos ustedes y yo espero, yo espero que se recuerden que hemos tenido victoria, no hemos tenido de Jota. Yo veo a Flavio Cumpliano por aquí, al licenciado. Y yo quiero que ustedes sepan, yo no sé si tú lo conoces, que tanto Mai Nieves y yo, Mai Nieves y yo, en el, en el movimiento Pavieque, identificamos una persona que era la persona más apropiada para organizar todo Nueva York por pie que y esa joven es Melissa Malvin Berry. Yeah. Yeah. Yo me recuerdo que para recompensarla honorable la llevamos a Vieque. Yo lo tengo en video. Mira, mira, lo tengo en video. Y ella está caminando con mi hijo, está caminando. Yo le paré. Ella dice, ¿por qué? Acabaste de pararte encima de una bomba. I have a video, you're a video. So it's great, and it is great that I went to this event de los tres reyes magos, y yo veo a nuestra speaker orgullosa decir, yo estoy ayudando a esta organización, Positive Workforce. It felt good, man. Thank you to Positive Workforce, la coordinadora de, no, de todo Nueva York, por Oscar, gracias, aquí no estamos solos, tengo que parar ahí, pero la próxima vez que vengamos a cualquier lugar, yo espero, yo, hay que seguir viviendo con la esperanza que Obama haga lo que lo, 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 lo haga, que lo haga, que lo haga, y para dejar con lo de Vieques, para dejar, yo recibí una llamada de Radio Vieques, ¿Y quién estaba en el micrófono? Esa joven licenciada. ¿Qué yo quiero decir, Natasha? ¿Qué es lo que yo quiero decir? Que estamos pasando las nuevas generaciones. Y va, yo, yo digo 
que gracias al sacrificio de Oscar López Rivera se está ayudando a despertar un pueblo ¿Okay? y estamos en buena mano porque aquí está pasando de nuestra generación a todas las generaciones nuevas so, te doy gracias José López eh, no voy a decir cuando, como yo conocí a José López algún día cuando te escribe el libro ¿no? está bien pero thank you very much Let me thank all of you. There are so many of you that we want to acknowledge. Obviously, we don't have all the time. I want to thank the people who came from Chicago. That's the furthest. We have people here from, uh, obviously, um, Ohio. And I want to recognize um, around here, Nozomi Ikuta, who's been with us, Reverend Nozomi Ikuta, who's been with us in every battle. Uh, and she just came in from um, Ohio. From Florida, and, oh, and where is Marcos? Marcos, Marcos, Marcos led. I want to say that Marcos Vidal led the last struggle, the last struggle to free the last group of Puerto Rican political prisoners was led by Marcos Vidal, who's also here, who came in from Florida. So. Um, Nozomi, I want you to come up and lead us in a little prayer that I think you can obviously create so well. But then is it. I want people to know and to see Marcos Vidal because Marcos comes out of the work of Chicago. He's become an a very, very important leader among the uh, Puerto Ricans in the United States. But he also, as I said earlier, led the last campaign to free the Puerto Rican political prisoners in 1999. And I want to thank, there's so many people here in New York, in Washington, D.C., who made this possible. And I, I want to recognize Mayrim, there's a, Kumpian, there's a whole bunch of people. Um, uh, the, uh, Ron Blackburn, I mean, there's a Gretchen, there's a whole host of people here who made this possible as well. And Joe Magno, who's a wonderful contact here. Paul, Paul I'm sorry. Paul. Paul, I'm sorry, Paul, I saw all these years. Paul, right here. Right, right here. So, uh, Nozomi, can you come up and just do a little prayer in the, and then we can go? You know, we've got a lot of different theologies here. It's not about theology, it's not about religion, it's not about creeds, but it's fundamentally about our faith in the moral arc of the universe because the arc of the universe calls out for justice and it calls out for freedom and it calls out for compassion. We know that Oscar should have been home a long time ago and that the president has very little time left to do what he is fully able to do. So let's just take a moment to unite our hearts and minds <laughs> with the God as we understand that God, the power that is within us and among us and beyond us. Let that power reach out to President Obama's ears and let it penetrate his heart and mind and soul. Let him know and feel what we all here know and feel. That nuestro hermano Oscar tiene que estar de nuevo con su familia y con su patria in the name and power of love and freedom. Amen. Thank you. Um, what better way for us to say um, goodbye? I hope all of us keep the struggle. We need to keep it going. We need phone calls, we need emails, we need all of the things that we can to get to the White House.
es hora de luchar. A ese llamar patriótico, no arde tu corazón. Que no te lastimas, el río del cañón, nosotros queremos la libertad. Nuestro Yeah.